So we now have all the ingredients with which to write down Faraday's law. And you might think I would just write it down. But actually, I'm going to pseudo-derive it. But let me explain what I mean by pseudo. Um, you can't actually derive Faraday's law in full from things we've learned before. Faraday's law is a new law of nature, something we know from experiment, something that Faraday figured out by careful observation of natural phenomena and of experiments that he did. Um, it can't be derived from things we've seen before. But in one context and in a, certain, in a certain partial way, in one specific context, it actually can be derived. And I'm going to start by deriving it in that one context in which it can be derived. And then the generalization, which will take us to Faraday's law in its full glory, that I'm just going to have to appeal to experiment to give you. But let me start by deriving it in the one context in which I can derive it. And this is the, a context in which it's related to what is also called emotional EMF. So an electromotive force associated with something moving. So um, here's the setup. I have a loop of wire. And I'm going to make my loop a rectangle. Um, so that's a loop of wire shaped like a rectangle. And it's the loop of wire that's moving. So the word motional refers to the motion of this loop. And I'm going to have this loop moving um, uh, in this direction with some velocity v. So I have a moving loop of wire. And I'm going to work out what the integral around this closed loop of the force on a charge Q, which I take around this loop. And what force am I going to talk about? Well, I'm going to talk about the magnetic force um, on a charge Q as I walk that charge Q around this loop. So if there's a magnetic force, that means there must be a magnetic field. So I have to tell you what the magnetic field is before we can figure out what this um, EMF is. I need to tell you what the magnetic field is in this problem, in this example. So there is a magnetic field in the direction perpendicular to the board. And I'm going to choose my magnetic field to be coming out at you. The magnetic field coming out at you, um, coming out through the board pointing at you. Um, However, this magnetic field doesn't exist everywhere. There's a magnetic field there. There's a magnetic field here. 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 But there's not a magnetic field over here. And in particular, there's a magnetic field everywhere to the left of this dashed line here. So all in this region here. There's magnetic field. Everywhere in this um, region that I've just shaded, everywhere to the left of this dashed line, there's a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is coming out at you. Um, but not over here. Over here where I'm standing now, no magnetic field. Okay, This is the setup. So I'm taking this loop of wire, and I'm pulling it this way. I'm basically pulling it out of the field zone into the zone in which there's no field. And now I want to work out what the EMF is around this loop. Um, so let's do it. And this I can, we can do based on physics that we've learned previously. Um, no new physics here. So let's think about a charge. This is a current carrying wire, so it's got lots of free charges in it. Let's think about a bit of charge down here. I've got a charge right there. And let's ask what the magnetic force on that bit of charge is, well, the magnetic force always is Q V cross B. And then we're going to divide by Q. And we're going to dot with DS. And let's do that calculation for a bit of charge right there. So there's a bit of charge here. What's its V? Well, its V is this way. 
What's the magnetic field? Well, the magnetic field is coming out at you, so I do V cross B, V cross B, and the force, there's a magnetic force on this bit of charge, and the magnetic force is pointing downwards. So I have a bit of charge here, Q. There's a force on it pointing downwards, and that's completely useless. There's a force pointing downwards, and the wire runs this way. This force pointing downwards is not going to move any current. And you see that in the equation by saying there's a force pointing downwards, that's the V cross B, but then I dot with dS, and the dS is this way. The force is downwards, the dS is that way, F dot dS is zero. So yes, there's a force on this charge, but it's a useless force, it's pointing downwards. Same thing for charging this bit of wire. Downward force on it, the dS is, is going that way. And so, um, by the way, I should have said which direction I'm going to do my contour integral my closed loop integral, I'm going to be walking my charge around this loop in this direction. So that's why my ds was pointing this way here. Now my ds points that way. Um, but it's useless. Nothing here, nothing there. Now what about out here? Well, out here there's no force because there's no magnetic field. So here there's a force on the charges, but it's a useless force because the force is that way. Here there's no force at all because there's no magnetic field. Here there's a force, but it's a useless force. And then we get to this section of the loop, and we get something. Because now, there's a force on the charges, and it's pointing downwards. And it's, that force is parallel with the ds, which is to say the force here can push the charges. It's going to drive a current. So the um, EMF around this loop is actually only given by the integral over the left leg of the loop, because everywhere else around the loop, this integral vanishes. And when we work it out, what do I get? Well, the Q's cancel. So I get a V. This V is the magnitude of the velocity vector. I get a B. This B is the magnitude of the B vector. And then I get this distance here, which I'm going to call W for the width of the rectangle. So in this simple setup, there is an EMF around this loop, and the EMF is given by VBW, where V is the speed with which I'm moving the loop, B is the strength of the magnetic field in the left, in the, in the green region here. Notice it's important that um, there be no magnetic field over on the right. If there were a magnetic field here too, everything would have canceled, I would have gotten nothing. So it's important that the magnetic field only exists to the left of some boundary, it doesn't exist to the right. That was key to me getting a non-zero answer. So I'm pulling the loop out of the field region, and I get an EMF, which is VBW.